Hello, everybody. Uh, before we start, I would like to ask you a question. Does anybody in this room does not understand Portuguese? Okay, so we're doing in English. <laughs> okay. Do you speak what? Spanish? English. English? Okay. I don't speak Spanish, I'm just asking. Okay. I can pretend to speak Spanish, but not good enough. So, yes, yeah, so we're doing that in English, so thank you very much for being here. Uh, my f first time ever in Portugal, and I already feel home, because, you know, uh, I'm a Brazilian Japanese, so I speak Portuguese too. And um, I don't know how many of you are surprised about that. Everywhere I go, people think I'm a foreigner and that I, and that I don't speak the local language. Here, it's kind of different. But mo most people don't expect a Japanese to be a Brazilian too. But uh, the, the largest Japanese community outside Japan is in Brazil. So if you go to the south of Brazil, you will see a lot of, of Asian people. And I guess that the only place in the world where the Asian people are called Japanese are also, well, besides Japan, of course, uh, uh, Brazil, because everywhere else uh, people are Chinese. Okay? <laughs> and... And today I'm going to talk and do some live coding to you, discussing micro profile. I have some slides, of course, but I just think the slides are boring, just talking about specifications and what can you do. It's much better if we just show you how you can code with this awesome stuff, awesome stuff that is happening in the micro profile landscape. And also, I don't know if Bruno is here. Maybe he was. Uh, how many of you have got this uh, voucher? Okay, if you were one of the lucky uh, 50 people, uh, you got this voucher. So this, um, this is a partnership between Microsoft and, and Red Hat. So Bruno gave you this voucher. You'll be able to use uh, $300 in Azure credits. That's $100 more uh, than the, the, the normal offering. And so you can just uh, register on the Azure website using this code and follow this URL. You'll be able to deploy your microprofile implementations on top of Azure, and you have 90, uh, three months, 90 days, to be, able to be able to use these credits. Okay? So thank you, Microsoft, and thank you, the engineers from Red Hat, for providing this tutorial too. So all of the stuff that I'm going to show you today, you'll be able to, to try on Azure. Thank you. To, thank uh, thanks to this voucher, and I have this one left, so if anybody wants in the end to pick it up, this one is available. Okay, I have my credits already. And so, uh, my name is Ed Yanaga. I'm a director of developer experience at Red Hat. My Twitter is at uh, Yanaga. Just in case you want to follow me, I talk a lot about Java, DevOps, microservices, software architecture, and anything else. I had some books at the Red Hat booth this morning, but they, I'm out of them too. I also happen to be a Java champion and a Microsoft MVP, and I work for Red Hat, which I believe is a very cool combination, but you don't have to take my word for granted. Okay? And that's it. That was my slides, but I, I needed some official thing to show to you, so I downloaded the micro profile slides from the website. These are the official ones. But that is, oops. But it will be a very quick. Slideshow, okay? So, is it good? No. So, okay, uh, you can, if you, if you want, you can go to the uh, micro profile site on the Eclipse Foundation. You get all of this stuff. You can read it uh, at home. But I'm just going to s tell you that initially Java E was like, uh, uh, was stuck in the past, like in the Java E7 specification, nothing was happened, but you know, there's a lot of people, developers, companies uh, around Java E that were worried about the future of Java E. So some years ago, people decided, well, if Oracle is not pushing Java E forward, maybe we should that by ourselves. But since Java E was a process controlled by Oracle, people decided to create another foundation, another process, another organization, another community in the Eclipse Foundation, and we call that Micro Profile which happens to be a good name because we already had the full profile, Java E full profile, we already had the web profile, and now we have the micro profile. 
and we have many companies and communities involved in this, in this uh, initiative. And some of these companies and individu individuals working on that, you can see that you have Payara, Fujitsu, Tommy Tribe, IBM, Red Hat, and many other companies. And we have some jugs involved too. We have the London Java community, and we have the Soul Java, uh, Java user group involved on that. And now we have Oracle too, involved in the micro profile. So that's, that's the place where things can evolve more quickly rather than waiting for the JCP to standard, standardize something. So think about MicroProfile initially as the lab where innovation can happen quickly. And later, maybe many or most of the specifications that are being developed on the MicroProfile community could be adopted later by Java E or now Jakarta E. So they're, they're not competing initiatives. I think it's more a kind of a collaboration. So much of the work that is, has been done on Macro Profile for certainly will be used on the new Jakarta initiative, okay? So what happened since the uh, inception of the Macro Profile initiative? We have version 1.0, it was released on September 2016. We just had like three specifications, CDI 1.2, JSONP 1.0, and JAXRS 2, which means nothing because they were already Java E7 specifications. They just grabbed, oh, we need something to start, let's get these three specifications and give something for people to implement. Again, micro profile is a specifications, so people need to implement these specifications in its own products. And we had some many uh, uh, nice uh, implementations of the micro profile specifications since. We had some examples like Payara has micro, uh, IBM has the Liberty profile, and of course Red Hat has its own implementation, which happens to be my favorite, okay? Uh, Wildfly Swarm, if you ever heard about Wildfly and Wildfly Swarm, Wildfly Swarm used to be the implementation from Red Hat, but we just renamed the implementation. So now because of branding and because uh, Wildfly Swarm used to mean that, well, it's Wildfly, but with a different implementation, different concept. But now the projects are so different that they decide to give different names. So Thorntail, which is kind of hard to pronounce, right? Thorntail. It's uh, a completely different implementation from Wildfly, and the micro profile implementation of Red Hat from now on is called Thorntail. Okay, but if you go to the website, it's still written in Wildfly because you know engineers take a lot of time, a lot of time to change the package names and everything else. Okay, so it takes some months for them to, to finish this this migration. It's not simply uh, search and replace. Then uh, uh, version 1.1, we added the config uh, specification, which I'll show to you uh, too. In August 2017, almost one year later, we added a new specification. It, it, was, it wasn't an engineering problem. It was a problem of uh, defining which will the process to follow, where are going to fill our issues, where is going to be the source code, uh, who is going to be responsible for, for validating the specification, these kind of things. So they took a lot of time to establish the process. Then we, they used this process to create this specification and we had Macro Profile 1.1 config API, which is new, I'm going to show you that. Uh, which basically says, well, if you want to provide your, your JDBC URL to your application in runtime rather than the source code, you have different URLs for production, development, testing, and everything else, you can provide that at runtime to your application. So uh, I'll just skip, just, uh, you can read that later, the text. And Eclipse Micro Profile 1.2 in September 2017, which was much faster. We had the Health Check API, Metrics API, Config API 1.1, Fault Tolerance API, and JWT propagation for security context propagation. So we have all of these in Micro Profile 1.2. Uh, I'm not going to read that. I'm going to show you later. Fault Tolerance and Micro Profile 1.3, which is the current release. Uh, it was released the first quarter uh, of this year. Now we have also added support for open tracing. If you're thinking about distributed applications and you need to trace, because in the past, if something went wrong, we just opened the, the stack trace of our 
of our application, oh, I know what happened. If you have multiple endpoints, you need to establish the, the correlation between the stack traces. So you need a, a, tracing, uh, a tracing tool. So we added Open Tracing 1.0, which is based on uh, Jaeger from Uber. We also uh, provided Open API, if you ever known Swagger to define your REST API. Open API is the evolution of Swagger. And we also added the REST client API. Because we had a REST client in Java in the past, but it wasn't type safe. So now we have a type safe API to be used on uh, Eclipse micro profile, uh, which is much nicer to use. And I'm going to skip this. Things. And uh, we're expecting. Uh, it was supposed to be released already, but it, they didn't. Uh, Eclipse MicroProfile 1.4, they're just improving the things that are already uh, being specified. And the M4 2.0, maybe uh, later this year, where they're going to add uh, like some updated specifications and uh, from the previous versions. Okay, so you might add like JSONB, CDI, uh, and other uh, other minor stuff. So the core of the things are here. And if you think about most of the people that are using microservices, at least that's that's my perspective from the many companies that I've been able to visit, is that they are just creating their own like REST endpoints, exposing some kind of information. So if you think about MicroProfile, it it is enough. Uh, Enterprise Edition, uh, Java Enterprise Edition for you, uh, if you want to, to create this kind of simple applications. And most of the enterprise uh, microprofile implementations, for example, Thorntail or Wildfly Swarm, they also provide the capability for you, oh, I want to create a microprofile artifact, but I want to add other Java specifications like EJB, like JPA, if you want to, to, to query your database. So you could add that a la carte. You don't need to deploy or create an artifact with your whole application server. So I think that we, we already have enough to create my, my, your, your microservice like successfully. Okay, but enough of talking. That's all the slides that I wanted to show to you because we really want to see code. And this is, I think it's a bit dark, but I hope you can all see. If you go to Wildfly Swarm, dot io, which is still the, the, the old name, you'll be able to go to this beautiful page. If you go to the generator, you'll be able to create your own uh, artifact. Of course, you can use all of the Java E APIs that are available on Wildfly. But since I want to create a very cool demo, I'm going to uh, uh, PT, J Nation. I'm going to talk about um, uh, micro profile demo, which will be my artifact. I think it's a bit small, right? Let me increase the font. Micro profile demo, and I want to add some dependencies, so I'm going to add the micro profile specification to that. Micro profile. So I just add the specification, generate the project. I unzip it. And I just decide to open this on my IDE. Okay. And while it's being imported, oops, that's my screen. Here. Okay, I have my micro profile demo. I have, uh, it generates uh, some scaffolding. So I have a hello world endpoint. If I want to run this, it's already a successful running application. If I go to my terminal, I just need to open it here. Let me end my previous demos. So just let's try to. So if I go to micro profile demo, just generates a build. Oh, there is a, a gotcha here. The current version that is being generated on the site is not working quite properly. You know, engineers sometimes screw the things up. So I'm going to have to downgrade a bit uh, to zero final. This one works on my machine, okay? <laughs> okay, and so let's try to make a build. Just a Maven build. By default, the Wildfly Swarm plugin is going to generate a fat jar. 
And while it's detecting that, you can go to the targets. You can see that we have here an artifact called demoswarm.jar. If I run this, which is an executable jar, we will have, it takes some seconds to bootstrap. And of course, while you're demoing, it always takes longer than you're expecting, but it says it's ready. So let's just go here and hello. You can see that something is running on the background. This is the basics. So let's show, let's just try to, to increment a bit this hello endpoint. So if I want to do here, I want to create another endpoint. So let's create a person endpoint. Okay, so I'm going to say that it's application scoped. I'm going to uh, a path. It's going to be person. And I want to generate a public uh, list. Person. Oh gosh. People. And it's going to be a get. Okay. And it's complaining because I don't have anything. I don't have a person class. So let's create this person class. So I'm going to add some attributes, a private string name, and private int age. So let's generate some getters. Uh, I want to generate a constructor too. If you ever see my talks, I'm not a fan of constructors, so I always like to refactor that to a factor method. So, but because of the specification, I need to provide a default constructor. So let's create a public person here too, even though this code is not beautiful, but it will fit our purpose. So let's see, I want to return a list. Uh, return uh, arrays as list and say that I want person off Yanaga. I'm 39 and a uh, person off. Oh, ask Julio which is another Brazilian. How old are you, if I may ask? Hmm? How old? 38. 38. We're almost the same age. So it should be, I want to say that I want to return that as um, a JSON strings, application scope uh, slash JSON. It should be enough for my endpoint, so ju let's just try to run it. Oops. Clean package. Generating my jar, Java dash jar target demo swarm dash jar. Okay, let's see if my uh, JSON endpoint works. Okay, so hello works, person. Person. Okay, I have a beautiful JSON string. Take a look at that. We're going to use that in an other implementations. So just, this was just for us to be able to start. So this is my first microservice. I just want to keep this jar running on the background because we're going to use that later. And I want to use uh, swarm. I always forget the swarm port offset because you have a lot of port running like JMX and everything else. And I want to be offset one. So this jar is going to run on port 8081. And we will be able to call it later. So let's just check again before I move on. So now we're going to test 8081. OK, it's running properly. Let's create our next microservice. I want to say that microprofile demo, this is microprofile full. I want the microprofile implementation, and in this, uh, in this case, particular case, the REST client is optional on the generator, so I want to add the microprofile REST client to and generate the project. Okay, so I'll just unzip it and open on my IDE. Okay, let's. I want to exit the presentation mode from this one. 
this one is done. We won't mess with it again. And this one is the full one. This one I want to show you. So we're going to code on this one. OK, let's do the same hack for now. Switch to a version that works on my machine and to fine. OK. And what did we do? So let's get back to the hello word endpoint that we have here too. So let's show the config API. So we want to get some properties at runtime. How do I uh, get these properties from runtime? So maybe I just need to get a field, I'll say a string greeting. And I want to say, well, I'm going to inject this property. And this is a config property, right? Config property from micro profile. And the name of this property is greeting. So I can use that instead of saying hello from Wildfly Swarm. I can say that, well, let's just generate a string saying using the greeting. Uh, since I'm using the inject property, if I don't provide a value, uh, we're going to have a, an exception. So, but let's try to provide one property by default. I just need to create like the resource folder. The default places for you, for you to to add your, your, your properties as a, a properties file. It's metainf, and I need to add a file, microprofile config dot properties, properties. And you say that greeting equals to bon dia. If I say that, well, you can use just greeting. It should be working with the inject. I just want to run this application. Let's go here to my terminal. Micro profile full. Let's do a build. Is the font big enough for you? Okay, visible. Java dash chart demo. So let's see how it works. So this is the most basic uh, config implementation for the config API. So if I just go here to the localhost, it is hello, bom dia, okay? Because I provided that as implementation. But suppose that I want to change this, and maybe if I don't provide the property, I would be able to uh, not have an exception, but I could, uh, I could have an optional value. So the config API allows you to have an optional property. Since Java 8, we can use optional properties. So I can use the, an optional string here. So I could as well. I could use the greeting, but if you don't provide one for me, I can say hola. Okay, that's a default one. So greeting, hola, but uh, if I don't, don't want to provide that as a properties, I also can provide that as, uh, envir as an environment variable. I can provide that on the, on the Java command line too, too. So let's try to run this application. I'm going to build that again, and I'm going to change the property uh, at runtime. The funny thing is that usually on this demo, I just say hello, which is the default, and I switch to Portuguese. When well, I'm going, um, speak, uh, uh, I've written in Portuguese, and I have to switch to English. Oh, the greeting, say hello. I just passed the property as a Java property on my command line, and I'm running. So since now it's ready, hello. So it works. So you, won't, you wouldn't be using for just displaying strings, but JDBC URL, you would be providing your credentials to your application for the config API. We have support for like secured things. It's like you won't be able to see that much, much longer after you're using. So we have some support for, for this kind of things too. That's the basics of the config. Embedded on the, the micro profile implementation, suppose that you want to monitor your application in your, in your cloud native computing environment, so you need to provide some metrics of what is happening. A micro profile already provides you by default some, uh, an endpoint with some metrics. 
You can customize if you want that uh, not in text format. If you want that in other formats, we, that's provided too. You have CPU, memory, you have these kind of things. And, but this metrics API, uh, you're not supposed to be creating, even though you can, you're not supposed to be creating your user metrics on top of this API. This was designed for, for implementers. For example, Red Hat is supposed to provide their own metrics here, so you can, you can integrate with your, your, your monitoring platform to check if everything is going well. But it's nice to, to know that you have all of these statistics available for you out of box in any microprofile implementation. Okay, so this is the basics of the metric. So what else can we do here? Uh, I said we can also, if you're thinking about um, uh, using a, a REST endpoint for another micro, microservice, which is what I just did before, you can also create your uh, an interface to be consumed uh, on your code. So let's do that. I created on the other endpoints, I created uh, a person a service, so let's just remember. Here it's returning me, me for this JSON. So I want to create an interface that mimics this service on my other microservice. Let's try to create that. So here I'm going to create a class. It's going to be a person service. It's going to be an interface, right? So on this, I'm going to get path person. And I need a public a list of person. Let's say people again. Okay. And it is complaining because I don't have a, a class person. I need to implement it here too. And some people might complain that I'm just it's just exactly the same code as the, the other micro, uh, micro profile implementation. Yes. Uh, whenever you're using that, you're distributing some kind of uh, redundancy. It's common. So let's generate the getters. And again, this on, since I'm only consuming, I can do just this. It should be fine. Person service. And here, it's a list. And I want to use the get. Okay, this is all I need to create my REST endpoint. Of course, if I had multiple endpoints that I wanted to implement here, I would add other methods on my interface, but this should be enough for me to consume the other microservice that I implemented before. So if I have personal service, let's suppose that I want to add here the hello. I want to create another endpoint and it wants to return for now. It's just the same information from the remote micro profile. Okay, so it's going to return a list. Person, people, uh, get, and if you ask, we'll produce uh, application slash JSON, and it's going to add another path. I want to add like people, person. Okay, it's going to be hello, person. And I just want to create a REST client, client builder, new builder. I want to provide the base URL. Let's create a new URL here. It's going to be HTTP localhost 881. Okay, that's my base URL. I want to provide my URL. It's complaining because it's frozen exception. Let's just throw it up. I don't want to handle with, with it anymore. And build, and it needs a class, which is the type of the interface that I'm creating. It's going to be a person service dot class. If I did that correctly, you should provide hello, okay, and return person service dash people. Uh, people, so it should be working. I hope so. Let's check if it's really. So let's just, I'll try to clean package and run on the same line. Let's see what happens. Building my fat jar. No running. OK, 
Okay, it's ready. Let's see, localhost 8080, if I go to hello, it gives me the property that I've configured. And if I go here to person, oops. Method call not supported. Remove the hello? Uh, no? This wasn't expected, let's check. Okay, uh, back up. Uh, string interface, Ola service, string. Hmm. Interesting. Person produces method call not supported. Falta barra? Here? Let's try. No, oops. No match for accept headers. Is the content type this year? Uh, it's on the interface, person, and I need to provide uh, produces oh, uh, to Jackson. Let's see if produces works. Uh, it's accept no. Oh gosh. Let's query options encoded consumes. Thank you. You see, that's a nice thing about live coding and changing your example because I did a different one while I was rehearsing. So I need a JSON. So now it should work. Let's see. I just wanted to add some tension to the talk, but it was, uh, of course, it was planned. But now I hope it works. Okay, let's try hello slash person. Ah. Qual barra? Vamos lá. Esse aqui? Não. Esse está no person. Slash person. Aqui? Não, aqui não faz Aqui. Let, let's try to read. No match. Uh, no match. Same error. So let's try to create a produces here. Okay. No person service. If it's not, if consume didn't work, we'll try the other one. Sorry for this problem, people. Uh, I, was tr I was testing the strings because I suppose, well, it will work out of box. Now I have a bug. Works, right? Oh, thank you. See, that's what we do in real word programming. You try an annotation. Okay, so it's just working. It's the same one. So 
Let's hello word endpoint. So we have this get. It should be working. Oh, this one that it's this one that I want to show. I have this endpoint, but everything's working properly. If my other endpoint is working in real life too, so if I just stop the other microservice and try to run the same service again, I'll have an error. So you know we're used to using like Spring, Spring Cloud. We're used to the Hystrix concepts. So we want to, to, to implement some kind of circuit breaking in our application. Now we have a standard way of doing that. Okay. Uh, to, to be truly honest, I think that most circuit breaking shouldn't be done in our business logic codes. There are some use cases where I think it's completely valid. Most of the cases, I think, it, I think it's not. So maybe you want to use like your infrastructure for providing the circuit breaking for you, just like what Linkerd does for Spotify or what Istio does uh, right now in the Kubernetes world. But since we want to... We want to provide uh, this kind of client fallback in our application. Uh, in MicroProfile, I can just add the fallback annotation and say that fallback method equals to local people. Okay, and suppose that I want to create public list person and say local people. And I want to return arrays as list and a person. Oh, I thought I want to create a constructor just because of the fallback and I want to refactor the factor methods and I also want to provide a constructor. Okay, in my endpoint, suppose that uh, just in case my something ha bad happens on my method, I want to provide a fallback so I'm going to add person off Roberto, I don't know how old is him. Let's give him 25, okay? But not sure about that. <coughs> Just because I want to be generous, okay? Oh, let's, I want to. So let's run my microservice again and let's see how the fallback behaves. Okay, ready? Now my other endpoint's not working, but since I have a fallback, no exception happens, and I show you the, 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 the local cache. In a real world application, depending on your use case, if you have an external API that you want to call through REST, which probably, you, you need some kind of fallback because, uh, well, network is not reliable, REST endpoint failure fails, the other teams usually, usually fail, break things too. Uh, some use cases allow you to have like a local cache, so you could implement a, a cache to get this information. But uh, for me, the true answer for the whole distributed computing problem of having you need the data that is available on another endpoint is to create a secure S representation of your remote data in your local endpoint, in the local database that you'll be using your microservice. And I have two different talks. If you Google my name on YouTube, I have two different talks where I discuss how can you solve this problem. I also have a book which I was distributing uh, on the booth before. So uh, that should be the way for you to so be solving this problem. And if you're using, uh, if you're creating a secure asset architecture with your, you, with your local data store, you don't even need a fallback because you're not going to consume the data from the remote endpoint. You're going to consume the data locally and the, the, the data from the remote endpoint will be updated locally in another way. So we have another procedure which will fetch the results and update locally. This one could fail, but your business logic will never fail because you're always reading a local data source. That's a recommended approach. That's the one I strongly recommend you to read about it because I've been discussing microservices for like five, six years. I visited many teams worldwide, and it's, it's a traditional path when people are trying to use microservice. Create an endpoint, read, uh, create endpoint. It's low, it's buggy, it's unavailable, and everything else. Oh, we need to add a cache. Cache is not appropriate for many use cases. So, oh, then we need a local secure S 
data store after studying a lot about that. So I'm suggesting you to go straight to the most likely answer, create a secure S read data store in your architecture, and update that using some of the techniques that I'm describing in my book, okay? So, but if your use case really requires client fallback, in MicroProfile, you already have this API that you can use beautifully using just a standard fallback, add fallback annotation and pointing to a local method, okay? And last API that I want to show on MicroProfile is the health check API. You know, if you're using an application here, uh, I won't have full time to deploy that, but if I want you to point here, I have in my machine, I have a, a, a Kubernetes cluster running on top of my machine, and on top of Kubernetes, I'm running OpenShift. I have some applications. And if you go to my project, for example, I don't have anything yet. Default. Okay. So let's try something. No. I thought I had something deployed, but this one is brand new. So let's create. Let's deploy an image here. I want to create an image name. So Yanaga slash blue green color blue. I want to deploy. I'm going to the Docker Hub. I'm getting the details of the image and I want to deploy it. Okay. Since it's downloading, it's starting my application. When it gets blue, it will be running successfully. While I do that, I want to create a root. This endpoint, and while it's rolling deployments running, if I want, I might see the, the events. It's pulling the image from, from my Docker Hub. And while it downloads the image, I want to show you here how can I implement my own health checks using the Micro Profile API. I'll use them later on top of my Kubernetes platform, okay? Everything I need to do is to generate another class in my project, or oh, this project. So let's, oh, come on. Create a class, simple health check. Okay, and I'll say that it's application scoped. I'm going to say that it's uh, at health, which means it's a health check. And this class needs to implement a health check. Okay. When I implement this interface, I want to provide what does a health check do? Uh, when we have a distributed computing platform, like it's normal, uh, in the past we used to have a single instance of our server, so we knew when it was ready, we knew it when it was live, but since now we have multiple containers and running application, we have like hundreds uh, or maybe thousands, depends on your context of uh, artifacts running into production. You see, uh, uh, usually there's, uh, first thing you need to check if it's live, like if it's responding or if it's responding fast enough, because the worst case is not when your application is down. It's when your application seems to be up, but it's, but it's so slow that it's causing a huge degradation of performance in the whole system, right? That's when somebody complains, oh, it's slow. You go there and you restart your application server, right? You, we, we can do better than that. So we can provide a health check saying, if my application is live, and second, if my application is performing well enough, that's the purpose of a health check. And in, a, in the Kubernetes world, we have another endpoint too, which is the liveness probe, which means when, when your application is starting up, it's like it can be live, but it's not ready. Because some applications, you need to warm up your application because it's, before it's fast enough to receive your request. So you can implement a live health check uh, and uh, a readiness health check. Okay, live is an application up and performing fast enough. And ready, is my application ready to receive requests when after I boot that up, which is important if you have used Java, which, which needs some kind of warm up. So you can implement this here using Micro Profile too. So if I want to implement a simple health check, in the, in the, in the real world, you would, implement, we would be like executing some query against your database to see if you, it's performing well enough or checking some other metrics. But if I just want to implement something very dumby, dummy or dumb, I just want to have check response. 
name it. I want to say simple check. I want to say, well, my application is doing well, um, build. And that's all I need to do to create my health check. Let's try to redeploy this application. Here. Meanwhile, my application here is already running. So if I go to this, just show me a blue back background. Let's get back to that later. Okay, it's running. Let's go here. It's still working, but if I go now to my endpoint, localhost 8080 slash health, I have my checkup implemented. It's responded to 100, which means it's okay. On the status of my application, all of the information that I provide in the health check that implemented, I just said, simple check, it's up. This information is provided here. But if I wanted to, to, to provide more information, like the amount of time that a query gets to run against the database, I could be showing up too for informative reasons. So maybe you could like plot a beautiful graph using Grafana in your monitoring platform. You could be doing that. And why? And how do I use this kind of health check? I could go to my Kubernetes and OpenShift console. I could go to my deployment config, and I could like edit the health checks. So here, I could have like a healthiness, a readiness probe, or I could add like a liveness probe, and say, well, the path to my probe is slash health. And every time you check that, you get the information if your application is healthy or if your application is, is ready. So that's how you use that in your application. Okay, I just put here, I won't save because this um, microservice that I just deployed doesn't have a health check, so it will fail. But if I did it right, I would have implemented using MicroProfile, and it would have a health check for me to point to. Okay, so that's another requirement if you're using, you're creating microservice architecture. You need a health check, and as I shown to you, uh, MicroProfile has a very easy way for you to be providing your health checks using the health check API. And that's what I wanted to show you today. All of this information is available on the developers.redhat.com website. I strongly encourage you to do so if you want to get an electronic version of uh, my book, Migrate into Microservices Databases. It's already available on the website. And thank you very much. Muito okay. obrigado. Esqueci de falar, uh, I forgot to tell you, we are raffling, I brought this, this beautiful Chromebook. So if you guys got all the stickers and fill in your, your nice O's, put in, in there, you'll be able to, to participate on the raffle. So this beautiful Chromebook, I'm donating that to the organizers so they can give that to you. Okay, thank you very much.